I'm finally getting around to doing my sewing room tour. I'm about to start a new project. It's halfway clean, so I figure I may as well go ahead and knock it out. So if you followed me for the past several years, you know that this is sewing room number three. Um, my first one, I did it all myself. I think I did it for like under $500, including installing my own hardwood floors. Um, I recommend it only if you uh, want to be exhausted. It was a lot of work. If you've done floors before or you really know what you're doing, then knock yourself out. But it was a lot of work. I had never done them and I had never even seen them done. I think I looked on YouTube um, and I kind of figured it out. But nonetheless, I really liked the room. Um, it was probably a 10 by 10 room, so not that big. Um, but it was definitely functional. It had a nice big closet and, you know, done its, did its job. And then uh, we had a baby, so I moved out of that room, turned that room into my nursery, and I moved downstairs into an office. Uh, very small. You know, houses that have the already made offices, of course they don't have closets, and so there was really no place to kind of like hide storage stuff. Um, and it was way too small. I think I stayed there for like a year, and that brings me to this room. So I also had a closet um, in, uh, in the other room. So I had a closet completely done. It was amazing, absolutely beautiful. But what I found is that I spent the majority of my time in my sewing room and I always ended up going back to my closet, which my sewing room at this time was downstairs. And so I had to go all the way up to my closet. And so I'm grabbing stuff out of my closet kind of like as a frame of reference. And I'm always bringing it back down to my sewing room. So I figure, you know what, why not just take both of those rooms and kind of put them in together? Um, which brought me to this room, which is a very big room. And so it allows me to have my closet and my sewing space and just my all around happy place in this one room. Um, to the point where my husband wanted to do uh, a, a door, like a door with glass. And I'm like, no, I want the door to be shut. I don't want anyone to look in here. I'll even put a lock on the door. No one lives here but the two of us. But I'm like, I'll put a lock on the door just because I don't want anyone in here. Uh, but yeah, so this is definitely like my happy place. And I took a while doing this only because I wanted to kind of find stuff that was functional and stuff that I needed. So I needed proper storage. I needed a proper place to store my, my fabric. Um, so I'll go around and I'll take you to kind of where I got the stuff, um, what I use it for. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, comments, hopefully I'll remember because this has been like a year and a half I've had this room or probably, I don't know, it's been, it's been a minute. Um, and I've been meaning to do this, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So hopefully I remember where I got everything. Um, if not, just shoot me uh, a question. Hopefully I have an answer for you. Thank you guys, I hope you enjoy. Hello, welcome to my sewing space, creative space sewing creative space. So we'll start off first with the flooring. Um, I purchased the flooring at uh, Lumber Liquidators. I think it was about $600 all in. I found someone off Craigslist that could install them um, and I love them. It definitely gives the room a brighter feel. Um, in addition, I painted the walls a very bright matte white. So it bounces off, uh, the light bounces off the wall really, really well. Um, and here's where I keep all my leather to the side over here just because I like to have it out in the open and not in the dark because it does tend to kind of get this weird smell to it. Anyway, so this cabinet here is the Alex drawers. Um, I'm sure you've seen them all over the place, all over um, Pinterest. They've been around at Ikea forever. They're $129 and I store pretty much everything in here. All my notions, all my stuff, my leather making stuff, um, bias tape, everything I, for the most part, I store in here because it keeps it nicely out of the way and it's organized. It probably looks like it's mass confusion, but it's not. I know where everything is. Um, and then, you know, considering they're only $129, um, you know, I think it's, they're made really well. So I would definitely recommend getting one of these. So here are my machines and these are the machines that I use more frequently. Uh, the first one being the Cellrite, which is uh, the machine that I use for leather and sewing like thick material. Um, 
The other one is the Bernina, um, which I use that one on a daily basis. And then I use the serger. I got this serger off of eBay like four and a half years ago for under a hundred dollars and it has not failed me. Absolutely love it. So I would definitely look at, you know, some other options. If you don't have the budget to buy a new machine, go to eBay, go to Craigslist. They're out there. And then here is the embroidery machine that I am not in love with. I'm going to soon upgrade that one. Although I've only had this one for about a year and a half, it just really hasn't worked well for me. So here's where I store my fabric. Um, I've got these shelving um, from a place called The Loading Dock, which is in Baltimore. It's this pre-owned place that builders end up putting like their stuff that when they tear out a house, they bring it to this location and people from the public like myself, we can go in and buy it. I purchased these for about $300. They're about 42 inches tall and 66 inches wide. So these shelves, I had some extra like wood in my garage. I just used the, uh, my circular saw and kind of made the shelf, means the ones that you see on the sides. So the cabinets that you see underneath, I purchased those at Lowe's for about $100 each. Um, so all in about 300 bucks. They were unfinished. I ended up painting them white. And they are like 30 inches tall. Two of them are 12 and a half inches wide and one is 18 inches wide. And it's a great place to kind of hide storage again and then it has a shelving inside. So the tabletop um, was left over from the flooring. So I figured I could, um, you know, just purchase a new tabletop, but why do that when I had all this extra flooring? And it worked out perfectly. It's nice and sturdy and it matches the flooring, so I am pretty happy with it. So in this closet, this is one of the two closet sets in the room. It's, it's pretty much everything left over, like all my scraps, everything, and some of my arts and crafty stuff that I do with Chandler, I kind of store it in here as well. Um, I also have my printer, um, a couple of older sewing machines that I used, um, that I no longer use, and I have my file cabinet, which stores all of my patterns. Um, it used to be really organized, but kind of the patterns are getting a little out of hand. So I just kind of write at the top of them, you know, if it's a jacket, if it's skirt, if it's pants, um, and kind of put them in there this way. I said I wasn't going to buy any more until I figured out a better method to store them, preferably um, digitally. So we'll see how that works out. But I haven't found any software that's able to allow me to do that in a very efficient way. So until that happens, this is what I am reduced to. So uh, my patterns that I print out, which are the Berta style patterns, um, I just typically hang them on the back of the door um, like you'll see in a second. Um, just kind of like on a hanger with a... Uh, with a big pin and it allows me to kind of just flip through and see them they were hanging in the closet but it just kind of it, it wasn't a useful uh, way for me to store them so I just ended up storing them there okay so that now takes us over to the table so I use this table that is 59 by 29 inches but I purchased two of them so they're together which makes it a very big table um, it's about 220 for the legs, which is four legs and two of the tables. And I use the brackets underneath to secure them to make sure they don't move. Um, very functional. I love it. It's very, it's nice and big. So then I have the thread wall. So I made the thread wall, which is about 48 by 41 inches. Um, I didn't use any type of like blueprint for it. I just figured I needed a space for my zippers and my thread. And I just kind of started going at it. Um, very functional. I'm happy uh, how it came out. I painted it white so that it blends in with everything else. Um, so here we go from there. So this closet um, is a second closet in the room. And so I just keep my jackets, blazers, coats, and some extra shoes that I have in this closet, as well as my wedding dress. That's just kind of stuffed at the top. Not a good place to store it and a good way to store it, but nonetheless, it is stored there. So this cabinet here, which is only about 30, 40, $40, I think it's 40 bucks. 
and it's the Bissick cabinet. It's a shoe cabinet actually from Ikea and I use it to store um, all of uh, Chandler's patterns. So uh, they're just kind of, I need to organize it because I mean truly it's just kind of tossed in there and I just flip through them. It was organized a couple weeks ago, but yeah, I haven't gotten around to doing it. Uh, but it's a good way to store it. So nonetheless, it's the Vista cabinet. So this is the other side of the room where I keep my clothes. So this used to, I used to have additional pieces for this, but when I moved them into this room, I figure if I don't move all of that in here, then um, I won't be so inclined to hoard all kind of clothes. Um, so typically I give stuff away, I take it to the Goodwill, um, just because I make like five pieces, five to six pieces a month. So when you look at it in a year's time frame, that's a lot of clothes that I'm just holding on to. So I do like to purge quite often, um, unless it's pieces that I absolutely love and can't get rid of. Um, so it's functional. It works for me. Um, I don't need any more extra space. I mean, in my mind, I say I do, but truly I don't need any additional space um, to store this stuff. So it all works out. I mean, I'm able to be inspired by the clothes that are there and by the colors and how it's talking to me. Um, and then I'm able to actually create in this room. So it's one room that allows me to do everything. So I hope you guys like the tour. If there's anything I didn't cover, and I'm sure there is, just shoot me um, a comment or shoot me an email. I I'd love to answer any questions you may have. Again, thank you guys so much um, for watching the tour. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye.